unearthed by wind. When the winds drive south from Anatolia, down through western Iraq and into the Kuwaiti borderlands, the dunes shift in waves, an ocean cresting in a swirl of dust the camels traverse at nightfall. The wind presses on, curving over parietal bones, smoothing them like river stones where no water runs, grain by grain, an entire skull emerging, its hourglass sockets staring out at the world once more. By companies, by battalions, these skeletons rise slowly from the earth, dressed in moonlight and shadow, limbs pointing to the ancient constellations, the far horizon, cold mountains to the north. They chart their way by the fires of nomads, imagining wives and children grown old these long years apart, how they will rest once they return, wordless. Some years they spend buried in sand, in others they ask no quarter of the wind, a council of ravens on their collarbones. They follow trails of jet exhaust which line the heavens. They walk toward cities of light. You know, I don't know if you know this, but um, I used to think about, when I, in 2004, for example, I used to think about the people, the guy that fired the RPG at me. It was fired directly at me. There was no one else around me at the time. Or, you know, the snipers that was hunting us during the month of August thought about the, um, the mortar rounds. There was a specific mortar crew that was attacking our base. I thought, I thought about the people who were trying to kill me and, and why they might choose to pick up a weapon. There's so many reasons that I could come up with. One of them could be, and that's what was really the seed of this poem, which I wrote years later, was that um, you know during um, the 91 Gulf War, when I asked you your ages and said from 91, during that war, um, down in the Kuwait border, when the Iraqi army was arrayed down there, they had massive trenchant systems. And it was put in the papers here that, and, and maybe you haven't gone back to see these news reports to know kind of the tenor of the time, but they, um, they, people here were trying to, the authorities were trying to sort of, um, get us prepared for what's about to happen, you know? And so they, they estimated about 30,000 might die assaulting those trenches. And of course, that never happened um, because it's made of, they're made of sand, you know? So if it's sand, it's very, just because of the way sand works, well, we just thought, just get these massive con combat bulldozers, which are unbelievably large and bulletproof windows and stuff. They put their, the, 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 the rake, what do you call the, um, the trough, the trowel, what's that called, the blade? The blade, yeah, okay. Yeah, they put it like at an angle, right? And then they just got online, troops behind them, and then they just drove over and just buried them alive, you know? Just drive, just bury them with the sand that they had built the trenches in. But that happened long after we'd been bombing them for during the initial air campaign. So you have battalions and regiments of Iraqi soldiers um, who are, they know that we're going to bomb them first. So they've been digging in for a long time, digging deep. You know, they have entire battalions underground, you know. So we know they're going to do that. So we just drop a bomb and seal them in there forever, you know. As if all, all that was needed was a, a headstone just to put there, to finish the job, keep moving, you know. And um, uh, I thought about those skeletons in the ground. That's really what led to this poem and how they might be trying to walk home, to get home someday. Because those... Their bodies, the skeletons, have never been repatriated back to Iraq. So you add 10 years or so to someone's life. Say they were 14, and now the guy is 24, and this guy's Turner has the same flag of that country that you know, his uncle and his dad had never came back from. That's one reason he might shoot at me, you know? So I've been trying to, I guess the, the, point, the larger point in that, and this might lead to a question from you guys, is. How can I evolve in some sense to try to understand the people I once thought of as an enemy and try to see, you know, what are their names and what do they like to do? Do, they, do you guys know that many of them, they've watched Oprah Winfrey, you know? They know Eminem. One of the translator guys I worked with, he was really into Orlando Magic. He won an Orlando Magic sweatshirt, you know? Um, they're not so distant from us in a lot of ways, you know, in, in what they think. They laugh. They love, they have aspirations, you know. So how can we connect with that? 